Hi, Les from Retired and Living the Dream, and today is going to be another long video into washing the car time. And everybody knows if I wash the car, it's a long video. Today's video is going to be about why I will never return back to the UK. It's a sad video, this one, because um, a couple of things have happened with regard to uh, a nephew of mine in the UK. And this goes along and it makes me so furious and angry about the UK and the crime. Yes, the crime. I've got to say that crime in the UK is unbelievable. If I tell you this little quick story uh, about my nephew, he's autistic, he's 30 years old <coughs> and he broke his leg a number of years ago and um, so he walks with a bit of a limp. So people can see straight away that he's not, he's not normal because he walks with a bit of a limp and he's just got that look about him that, you know, he's autistic and there's something not quite right about him. So he does get stared at and mocked and uh, talked about, but he's sort of used to that. He's 30 years old now and he's lived with this for all of his life. So sadly he's had to put up with it with a mickey taken from school and things like that. And uh, so his life really hasn't been a happy life. Because of all the frustration with people name calling and things like that. Now it's gone one huge step higher than that now. And this is what I'm infuriated, infuriated about because the police were going to charge him. The police were going to charge him with causing an affray. Can you believe it? Basically what it, what it was, when he was about 15, 16 year old, he was attacked and he was severely beaten up by half a dozen teenagers, I think, when he was 15. So for the past couple of years, Obviously, people are still being shouting at him and abusing him and mocking him as he walks along the street. So, if his, so for his own protection, he got a body camera. He got a body camera and thought, if somebody attacks me now, then at least I've got a, a video of it. Att you know, people attacking me. And uh, even though I talked with him and I said to him, actually, the body camera attracts more attention than not having a body camera. He was adamant that he's going to wear it because he was, he wants his own protection and things like that. And um, so of course he got more unwanted attention off the people that didn't want to uh, have name calling him and things like that. But because he was wearing a body camera, he videoed a lot of the abuse. And this is the sad part. He stood up against the bullies. He stood up against the bullies and name called them. You know, and he said, I've got you on camera. And one of them sort of threatened him. And what he did, he carried, again, he looked on the internet where he could carry, and he got some, it wasn't pepper spray, but it was something similar that sold on the internet that you can carry. And basically it's women who carry it you know, and the bags for if they're going to get attacked and things like that. And it was a spray, and it was like a paint spray. But the paint has got some sort of stuff in it that goes in your skin, so, so the police can follow up and, and uh, find out who's committed the crime or whatever. And um, so when he reported this to the police and showed them the evidence on his video, and these teenagers were name calling him, but they'd been name calling him for a long, long time. So he went over there and challenged them and said, you know, what you're doing and a few expletives or whatever. They stood up against him and could see that he had his body camera on, so they were never going to do anything violent towards him. But he'd had enough. So he sprayed one of them with the, uh, with the spray. 
Now the police, when they came round to interview him, said, when all said and done, they just name called you. And therefore, it's you that actually aggravated them by spraying paint on them. So you took the first action, not to defend yourself, but to aggravate. Can you believe it? Can you believe that? He's put up with this for years and years and years. So they asked him what other methods he has to defend himself if anybody attacked him. And he brought out like a, a police baton. You know, the ones that you flick and they come out. And the policeman sort of was having a field day now because he showed him what he has to defend himself. And the policeman said, where do you get this from? This is an offensive weapon. If you carry this around, around with you, and he said, and you get stopped by the police, he said, you could get arrested for having an offensive weapon. So now, the police told him not to wear his body camera because they've had complaints of people that the fact that this person is walking around with a, a, a body camera and it was him. So already he's been stopped from wearing it in one of the shopping malls and just looking at him and talking to him you could tell that he's autistic and uh, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't doing it to harm anybody. He was doing it for self-protection because he felt vulnerable and he felt, you know, nobody was on his side because he's had this abuse for years and years. And unfortunately, it's just got worse. I think anybody now that shows, you know, that there's a little bit vulnerable and easy to attack, these scumbags pick on them because they think, oh, we can uh, get away with it because there's nothing he can do. But I've got to say, top mark to him, he stood up for himself against these scumbags. And now, with the police's action telling him not to wear his body camera, he has become a victim again. Because now the scumbags know he's not wearing his body camera. So now they can say and do whatever they want without fear of being caught by the police. Now that went on a little bit too long for that. It was only meant to be short, but I was, I'm so angry that the fact of England, the, the youth of today are attacking young, or vulnerable people should say and they're getting away with it they're getting away with it because nothing's getting done about it how shocking and how sad that a young person vulnerable person can be abused all of his life by these young people and uh, they've got away with it it's sad He's been over here twice and he's have taken care of him. He is a challenging person to be with. But uh, he's had a ch when I look back of all the challenges he's had in his life, he deserves to be a bit the way he is. Like questions everything and But the one thing that stuck out when he came here I was sat and talked to him one day and he says, I feel safe over in Thailand, Les. He says, I don't have any worries of people attacking me over here. He said, there isn't the, the people standing around on street corners just waiting to have their say and uh, shout at me and hurl abuse at me because he said, I know I'm different. But how sad that is. Anyway, that, that's my own personal story with that. And if you're still listening, thanks very much for listening. It was a, 
a sad thing to, to talk about. Um, okay, going on from that, about the youth. The crime wave is going on in England. Shopping now, shoplifters, if it's under 200 pound, they won't get prosecuted for it. You know, sort of the similar thing happened in California. The governor of California said anything under a thousand dollars and it won't be classed as a, as a crime and they won't get prosecuted for it and the police won't attend for it. But you can imagine what happened then. Whoa. Shoplifting went through the roof. I'm thinking what a stupid statement to say. Now, although the English law and the politicians haven't said the same, realistically, it's happening now. It is happening. If you get caught shoplifting, it's not, no, it won't be logged down as a crime. The statistics for crime prevention and um, dealing with crime is very, very, very low in the UK. And why? Something when we were missing 20,000 police officers. And now the government makes such a hullabaloo story. Oh, we're going to, rec we're going to recruit 20,000 more police officers. Because we have to. Because crime is that bad. We can't cope with the, with the system that we've got now. You know, there's too much work for the officers to do, that's for sure. And with their hands tied as to what they can do and what they can't do, crime is paying at the minute. And today's youth, you know, there's a lot of people who, who, who didn't go to school during the situation of, you know, the, <coughs> when the, um, I'd say the situation because YouTube doesn't like that word. And they never return back to school. And they don't want to go back to school. Because they've had the good time, like, oh, I don't have to go to school, I don't have to do this. So now there's a university of crime amongst the young people. University of crime. Other young people tell other young people how they make the money. And I'll give you this other story. When I was, when I was dealing with the criminals, when I worked for the Prince's Trust, I got the trust of a lot of people and a lot of people confided in me and talked to me about why they, they committed crime compared to looking for a job and things like that. And we're going back 20 years now, 20 years. And I still remember the stories if it was like yesterday. And uh, this youngster, 15 year old, in not a very nice area, been missing from school for a, for a long time. And uh, he used to get paid a hundred pounds to sit at the end of the street looking for cars that normally don't come around or looking for strange people. Then he has a phone, he just makes a phone call. And he was a spotter for his friends that were daily drugs. He was getting paid a hundred pounds a week. This is 20 years ago. £100 a week. So what does he see? He sees the guys coming up, selling the drugs, making the money. So now they're on more than £100 a week. So that's his next progression through the criminal university. He start dealing the drugs. And then he sees the top people who are on lots of money because they drive around in nice BMWs and Mercedes. And that's how he sees his progression of criminality. He sees how it works, and it is. It is an organisation. There are people who steal the stuff, people who buy the stuff, people who sell the stuff. And in its own way, it is a criminal business. But people make a fortune out of it. Absolute fortune out of it. So anyway, that was a shortened version of why I will never ever return back to the UK. And the big reason for that is crime. Crime, crime, crime. The robberies, the violence, the corruption in the UK is 
phenomenal. So for those people who have the, the opportunity to move from, Thailand, uh, from the UK, get out if you can, when you can, as soon as you can, because all I can see is the UK going in that direction. There is no good news coming out of the UK for the last 10 years that I've left it, or 12 years I've been out of, it, out of the UK now. I can't see any good news. I can't see one solitary reason why I would return back to the UK. Different to my normal videos, but if you've reached the end here, thanks very much. Consider subscribing, leave a comment down below. Until the next video, bye for now.